Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you all today at Palam. Uh, so my name is PV. I am a co-founder in space. So we, uh, we are a creative uh, space video workshops, talks, exhibitions. And uh, with uh, Arun Bhatt from uh, Dart Photography, we collaborated for this uh, you know, talk called Kuta. Every month we do one talk. We bring in people from different uh, uh, you know, the expert, the, or the uh, subject matter experts. And then have this talk. Uh, we had photographers, we had artists, we had people from different genres. And one fine day, we were, and I went to make a circle and then shot a picture of uh, one of the, you know, the remains of a substation. We posted up in bygone page. And then uh, Uday Kumar came up there and said, We've done an extensive research on this. And then that, that's how he's here today. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. So over to Uday. Thanks, Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, you know, we started a little so that everyone could gather. Uh, hopefully, we'll have not to spill over. Uh, just before I start, one quick uh, you know, show of hands for me to get the you know, kind of audience we have here. Anybody from Survey of India here? No? Is anybody who is a surveyor, civil surveyor here? No? Anybody who is an engineer? No? Excellent. Okay. So that's the right kind of audience I'm looking for. Thank you. <laughs> uh, there were some people from Survey of India who were supposed to come. Uh, I hope they will. So this uh, talk, though the name, uh, so you want to come in front? Yeah. Okay. So this name, you know, the Great Primavati Survey of India, it can sound uh, a little scientific, mathematical, whatever, and all things can be done. There's very, very, very little science mathematics that I'm going to be talking about. Though the topic is of that nature, what I'm going to be talking about is basically a little bit of history and a little bit of maths, very little, which is 8th standard, 9th standard of mathematics, which is why we have been here, very for that, <laughs> as well. Uh, so, it'll be about a one and a half, half, uh, one and a half hour of talk. Please talk anytime you have any questions and I'm happy to take it from there. There are no rules for that. So what I will do is uh, I'll start with a small video. Thank <laughs> you. 
questo uh, Those videos are uh
So in the in the mid 80s, so he was the man who kind of went to court, stopped it, and if you have high court around today, it's thanks to that man, his efforts. <coughs> the man next to him is Suresh Muna. Suresh Muna is uh, very, very, you know, I went to Bangalore and written multiple books in Kerala. He's done a lot of research, he's a treasure house of knowledge on the city. Anything you want, you ask him and he has the answer for that. And the lady next to uh, her is uh, Meera Jaipal, I prefer the name. She's authored a few books on Bangalore as well. This panel discussion was all about Tara Kachiri. So Chiranjeev Singh was the principal secretary and Bhaktavad Sala. Both of them had kind of collaborated to uh, ensure the Atara Kachiri was not demolished. So he was a man of the insight from the government side, who was leaking information on what kind of the BDEA corporation, whoever, you know, what plans they had, middle of the night to do something and all that. And Bhaktavad Sala was the man who used to go to press or go to the, uh, who went to the court and all that and got a stay out. So the whole discussion was about, you know, that. What was the issue? How did they prevent it? And all that. Fascinating discussion. End of that, uh, everybody was kind of told to ask questions and all that. There was a very elderly man in the audience who got up. It was exactly like this. Uh, except it's on the NG road, you know, the BMR scale guys had a, an auditorium there. It was held. So a very elderly man got up, very livid, very angry. He said, you know, you guys, you are all talking about the same stuff again and again. Everybody knows the Kavan Park, Vidhan Sauda, Lal Bar. Uh, this is nothing new about this. High Court, what's a big deal? Everybody in the world knows about it, they have heard about it and all that. But a group like yours actually should be doing something more. Not telling the same story, but there are many other interesting stories about that. Which you should go, research, find out and tell the world. He said, there is one unique uh, artifact building in Bangalore. There was something called the Bangalore baseline, which exists in Bangalore, which is of tremendous scientific and historical <coughs> importance. So that is what was used to build a map of India. Nobody in Bangalore, very few people know this. These buildings exist. They are in ruins. A group like yours should go find more about it, or tell the story to the world. That stuck us to a serious part in me, Bangalore baseline and you know, map of India and all that. At heart I'm an engineer and kind of felt good you know, to know something like that. So that's how it started and then I went over and uh, researched some of this. Everything in this is completely non-proprietary. So the, the information I have gathered is really all over the web and my presentation photographs, everything is on the web as well. So, it is a fascinating story when I dug in and understood what he was talking about and why he was so vivid. I was amazed at what was there. So, the building he was referring to was the first ruin that I showed you. There was a small room, you know, multiple views from front, left, back and all that. That's the building that he was referring to. And that's a building which is, at that time, probably known to a very select you know, group of people who had some connections with Survey of India or, you know, where really of some kind of uh, history, archaeology kind of background. So they were aware of the significance of that. So the story I want to tell you today is about that. And the, how did it all was this, this way. Okay? So all this is completely free. You can get this presentation on the web. It's loaded in a place called issue.com. If you don't remember it, just go there and search for Bangalore based on either my name or GTS. Google will throw it up for you. So, <clears throat> I'll start with a little bit of basics. And this should come like a story to you, it should not be like a lecture. If at any time you know I have uh, something like a lecture to you, please stop. Let's have a crack a joke and then we'll move on. Otherwise, I think I will be doing, I will be wasting all our times. So, an overview of what I'm not going to talk about. What is this thing called GTS? Why is, why is it a big deal? What's the connection to Bangalore? There is a significant connection. Okay. Learn a little bit about the basics of GTS, just so that you can appreciate what's happening. And there's this one man called Lantern, okay, who's a very, very you know, extraordinary person. We'll find out, we'll discover a little bit about him. 
and what did he do in Bangalore? That such no, that, that makes it such a big deal. And then subsequently, GTS has a few other connections in Bangalore, so I will talk about those as well. And even today, these places exist. You can go see some of them. Not all of it is destroyed. A lot of it is destroyed, but they are there. You probably passed by one today. If anyone who came by Trinity Circle, you probably passed by that just now. That will be 100 meters from there. And this thing that I'm going to talk about actually was about half a kilometer from here, along the old airport. So we are in the thick of all of this, but we don't know the story. So that's what you're going to be seeing there. And you can go visit these places. You don't need any sophisticated stuff. All you need is a phone. Uh, if you can just use your uh, GPS partners, go look at those places. I put it right up on the map as well. So you can live the experience too. Okay. So <clears throat> a little bit on what is GPS? What it stands for great technological survey that you saw there. Use it as a uh, it as GPS so it's easy. Now, in about last month, there was a lot of excitement about the mission to Pluto. Was, you know, we had a we had a flyby of Pluto. That's a scientific expedition, right? We had a mission to Mars, we had a mission to the Moon. We have more various of kinds of these things. There's one, this one's part as one of the greatest scientific expeditions of you know, humanity so far. It's not the greatest, since it has one of those. Okay. So, what's, why is it such a big deal? Because that exercise spanned about 150 years. Pluto is now, the uh, mission is about 9 or 9 years old now, and things are like that. This one spanned about 150 years. Thousands and thousands of people worked on it. Thousands and thousands of people died you know, working on this project. Extraordinarily expensive mission. At one time, you know, the king, uh, the British emperor, thought his uh, empire will go bankrupt if he continues sponsoring it. It was a big deal. More number of people died in this project than in all the wars in the 1900s, in the 19th century. What did it all lead to? It led to one thing, which is inch perfect maps of India. So what does each perfect mean? So we are, I think there are about 40, 50 people here. If I ask you how far are memories you wall from that wall to this wall, just guessing. Somebody will say 14 feet, somebody will say 15 feet, somebody will say 18 feet, 14.1, 14 14 14.5, all kinds of stories. Right? Just for the distance between the two walls here. What these guys develop end of this exercise? India was mapped to an inch. What do I mean by that? Yeah. So this is, you know, we'll see what this is later, but just so you understand what is meant by this case. The exercise kind of started in Madras. Yeah. They proceeded right up to the Himalayas. They finally actually measured the height of Everest. So what they measured as the height, or what they calculated as the height of Everest then, is only six inches off what we know the height of Everest to be today. Can you imagine some now, about 150 200 years ago, somebody getting the height of Everest six inches not to what we know it to be today with all our satellites and all kinds of you know, science advancements that we have today. So when I say inch perfect, this is how perfect I call This is what they call it. So, if they had done something so, so extraordinary, and guess what? It started here in my mind. The whole exercise of mapping the country, every village, every tree, every lake, every temple, every significant point in the country was mapped. This happened to be the basis. GPS exercise happened to be the way they accomplished it. And that exercise started here in Bangalore. Yeah. It's been 150 years for them to go from Bangalore to you know, all over the country. But that's why this is a big deal. GPS is a big deal. And the even bigger deal for us is that it started here in Bangalore. 
And this is the story I'm going to be talking about. Sir, it's just a thought. Yes. Our estimates and our measurements of going to through the ocean was meant would it have been some way been dependent on measurements or measurements? <laughs> and the start of all that would be here. Uh, well, everything in life is a learning all the other things. And so you can trace it back and say, you know, that was the case. But planetary <laughs> measurements are direct. So without a baseline, you're not going to do that. So Yes. So you can say well you can also go back and say, you know, similarly everything that Archimedes did, Pythagoras did, and everyone else. So I'll stay away from that. Uh, so the uh, a little bit of uh, history here. Anybody from a history background here? Researcher, history student, whatever. No. Okay. Uh, so Tipu Sultan was a big tom for the British, right? And there were multiple wars that he fought. He stopped the British from kind of so the Britishers had Madras on one side and they had also the you know, Kurg and you know, the Kerala bit with them. In between sitting in the center, Kutu Sultan, kind of the Mysore kingdom was not theirs. In 1799, they defeated him and they killed him. Right? So there was one man called Lambert, Major Lambert at that time, who was a soldier who was a part of the that fought the Britishers. Okay. And the Britishers, one of the big problems they had was Tipu, Tipu Sultan knew every you know, place, every stone around here. So he would kind of outmanoeuvre the British everywhere. The Britishers being new to the place did not know the topography of the land, they didn't know anything. So Tipu, Tipu was you now outflanking them everywhere, you know, running away from there, attacking from unknown sides. He knows the place inside out. So for the British, this was a big deal. But they did eventually you know, win, win over him and he was killed. So by then they realized that understanding southern India was extremely important for them. For multiple reasons, obviously for military reasons. There's also a very important reason which is money. The British collected tax. When you collect tax, you collect tax on land. When you collect tax on land, you collect it on the basis of how big or small it is. Just like today, right? how big your house is, what kind of house you have, is what you know, defines what your property tax is. So the British did exactly that. So they wanted to get a good idea of what is South India like. In this land, Lambert, he proposed a survey. The survey is just a mapping exercise. But he said, I want, to, I want to conduct a mapping exercise, a survey exercise, coast to coast. So when Tipu won, I'm um, sorry, when Tipu lost to the British, British became masters of Southern India. All of South India became theirs. So he said, I want to do a coast to coast survey from Madras to Manila. And you know, please find me for this. And potentially he said, we can actually extend it south to north, even though a lot of areas in the north were not under the British Empire. He said, Kanya Kamari to Kashmir is what we can progress as well on the basis of my survey. This was approved. It was a big deal at that time. A lot of money and all that. It was approved. And, and Blackburn started this exercise in today's Krishnaspur, which he calls as Krishnaspur. So he measured something in here. He started his exercise in here, Krishnaspur. That is the start of this whole mapping exercise. So the, um, we'll see this a little bit. Eventually what he started here in Krishnashtra is what led to measurement of Everest and the map of India. And that is the core of the you know, story that I'm going to be you. Any particular reason for choosing this Kedapur? Because, well, uh, luck more than anything else. Because uh, Tipu was defeated in Sri Lanka. Mangalore was a big uh, base for the British even then. So I heard another story. Okay. Uh, it was that uh, when they defeated uh, Tipu, yep. there was a chap by name, a Scottish guy by name, uh, Colonel Mackenzie. I'll, I'll, give this, I'll give you that as if you heard on. But strictly speaking, you know, the issue is that they defeated Tipu here, Srinagpatnam, uh, Madras, Bangalore, all these were British uh, internments. 
and somebody had to come back and settle down in this place. Right? So he did come back to Bangalore, and while he was in Bangalore, he made the proposal. And he was a surveyor. I have a little bit of say now the story to tell on, on him as well. I talk a little bit about McKinsey and a little bit about a few other guys too. But more uh, was that circumstances came together. Was it an ego that when McKinsey offered to survey Mysore, the East India Company said we will survey the whole of India? Uh, well, so if you hold your uh, parts for a few minutes, I'll come back. So this is the you know, Bangalore connection, and uh, I'm just going to be a little bit confused with this. I'll skip this for a second. So, anybody who can recognize this place, or who cannot recognize this place? Cannot. You cannot? No, I can. You can? Anybody who cannot, or anyone wants to make a guess? Who thinks they're not sure? Yes. Is this tower familiar to you? You yes. didn't make a guess. Yes. Yes. You wanted to say something? Yes, sir. You familiar? You know the place? Okay. So, I'm talking about this. So this is actually multiple places. If you have been on in Lalbagh, this is in Lalbagh. Also. This is also in a part of Maitri Sattva. There's one also on the Bodhi Temple. There are a few other you know, This is a thing I talk about. A lot of, almost everybody has gone there. A few people have seen this as well. And this is what Peter was referring to when he said, I put out some photographs. So there's a block there. There's a small box like this lying around. <coughs> On this, there's a plaque. You now, if you care to go see, it says somewhere of India, whatever, you know, the beginning of some baseline and all that. So, when that elderly man told about Bangalore baseline, um, and he said it's off Nikri Sakta, he, he actually mentioned this location. So, I went and I saw I saw that this is a photograph from there. So, this is one of the locations we're going to be seeing. We'll see what this is a little while later. But this is one, and I show you this stuff. This is a ruin uh, of uh, Endo Road. This is another building which is a very important. So I'm talking about the Bangalore connection. So before we see what these are and why they are such a big deal, spend two minutes or like five minutes on this. A little bit of marketing experience required for you to appreciate what's going on. Uh, and this is, doesn't matter whether you are arts, temperature, science, whatever. This was H standard, my standard mathematics. So basically, so it says in a triangle, if you know three angles of a triangle, let's say A, B, and C, and you know one side, through this formula, you can calculate the length of the other two sides. Sin is A by sin A, B equal to B by sin A, C equal to C by sin C. So, let's skip from, um, it doesn't matter if you don't know what sin is or not, but let's just say that if you know three angles of a triangle and one side, you can calculate the two other sides. That's basically the theory. Any questions, doubts about this? So, what does this mean? In practice, you can apply it this way. Let's say there's a there's a point there. You are on this is a river. You are on this side of the river. You you have to, on this side you can measure a distance. There's a guy here with a telescope. There's a guy here with a telescope. If it's not very apparent, and you know using a if you can use a something like a protractor or whatever. Point this telescope at this guy here, yeah, yeah, and point it here. You get you can measure this side. You don't have to go to the other side. You know, I mean, you can use a telescope and an angular scale, you can clearly measure the three angles. So you measure this angle, measure this angle, measure this angle. You measure that angle by going over that side, taking a telescope there, and pointing at these two points. Right? Over here, on this, you have a measuring tape laid on the ground, measure these two distances. So now, without having to put a tape across the river, you know, because you know this, which is one side of a triangle, you know three angles, you can calculate what is this distance and you can calculate what is this distance. Correct? So, with respect to these two points, you exactly know where that point 
Yes. This is the basis of the trigonometric survey. They call that trigonometric very simply because, as you saw, there's a trigonometric function, sine being used. Nothing more to it. So now how do you use this? So you use it this way. Let's assume these were, you know, there's a river here in between. There's two guys who are standing here with telescopes here and here. And that's what the tree or whatever on the other side. So you first measure these angles here and measure this one length, which which is called as a base line. And then you go over here. Now you can calculate these lines using that formula. Go over here, move the telescopes here and here. And measure these angles, measure these angles, measure these angles. Because you, because you now calculated this, you can now calculate what? You can this way proceed from here to here and completely know the location of C, E, F, D, G. Very straightforward. Nothing complex about this. Right? All they have to do is place a telescope here, here, and here, measure the angles, put a tape, measure this. Then after that, put telescopes here, here, and here. Measure these angles. Right? Or, I'm sorry, here. Put the telescope here, here, and here. Measure these three angles. And because this is a known distance, they can calculate this, they can calculate this. And then you know, put the telescope here, measure the sign, measure the sign, measure the sign, that's it. So this way you can map the entire area. And this is exactly what they did when they mapped in here. Except that these distances are in tens of kilometers. So here to here will typically 50 kilometers and all that. So this is the geometric survey, nothing else. So you so after this point, you don't need a tape to measure anything. All you need is a telescope with, in which you can check the angles and mount it on a protractor kind of thing, move it around, see what angle it's making and you've got. Simplifying the whole thing, but that's the basis. So once this, this is the first time you measure, so if this was just for argument's sake, let's say this is India. The first line you measure, they call it as the baseline. And the, everything you get subsequently from here is very dependent on how accurately you measure this baseline and how accurately you measure these angles. Right. So if this is if some if this is measured exactly precisely to say 10.51111 kilometers, you will get similar kinds of assessments for every case. If somebody says this is 10 kilometer plus or minus 2 kilometers, then everything is kind of in the same range progressively. Same with the story with the angles. So this measurement, so this is the only time you measure something on the ground. After that, you are basically measuring angles using telescopes. The reason you use telescopes is because you want to go as far out as possible. Naked eye, you can only see some distance. Use a telescope, you can see something way out. That's that's the only reason you use a telescope. Yeah. Is it something like um, so? If is it something like you need three telescopes? And you mean you, that you need one telescope, you move keep moving it and measure it. So how are you keeping track of what they are looking for? So is there like a point? Yeah, they do. So you can do it multiple ways. If there is an object there, you focus on the object. It can be a temple, gopra, it can be a tree, it can be a hillock, it can be something. And that is the story of this project. What, so what they measure is what the photographs are showing you. Right. Anything else? Yeah. Did they already start uh, calculating the altitude? Right. So, I mean, at this time. Good point. So, I just make one other thing. So, for mapping this whole area, accuracy of measuring this is important. And this was what was measured in by. So, the big deal about this GPS exercise is this baseline for mapping the country was actually done in Bangalore. So that is the Bangalore baseline. It was called as the Bangalore baseline. And those marks that you saw in Mekri Sarkar and other I said in Enu Road, those are the end points. So the, uh, imagine this to be Mekri Sarkar, imagine this to be the one at Enu Road. There's a distance of about 12 kilometers, but that's how big it was. Okay? So now, uh, that was the horizontal story. 
right? So you can proceed horizontally this way. Um, well, as, if I start from the C show, assume C is my C levels from there, and then I do the same exercise vertically. My triangles now are stacked one on top of another. Right? Assume, assume this is C level. This is a point further away, but these angles are vertical angles, not horizontal angles. The same logic point. So I can proceed from C level to some point G and know what is the set. That's how you get the vertical distances. But my the translation would be very different in measurement because it wouldn't be on a flat surface, right? It would be using the variations of topology <coughs> on the way. Yeah. So now, uh, I'll call this for later, but it's easy to answer. If you can imagine this in 3D, you can say, what you said, imagine this in 3D. Okay? It's the same triangle of actually that it was. I'll sketch it out for you later. Yeah. You visualize a pyramid and measure a pyramid. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes? Sorry, uh, yes, you're finished. Uh, my question was like, <coughs> Basically, <coughs> driving I and mean, dividing the whole landscape with triangles and rectangles. But the thing is, you know, in those days, um, to do a sort of a mapping, you don't have a base. In a sense, on paper you can do this. You can draw triangles and say, okay, this is how you need to map it. But when you're actually doing it, you don't know. You may be coming onto the same surface where you would have gone out here you know, and covered it. So we'll see how to make it. That's a big problem. That's all the things that they did. Somebody else had a question. Why did the KF group come on this? Q2 N0 run? I'll answer that. I was slightly wrong in when I said N0 run. What? Would you be talking about observation of this theory? So I won't talk about that. But this theory works for anyone who knows geometry. This theory is wonderful when it works. It's on plane surfaces. But the earth is curved. Right? So on, a, on, a, on, on the earth, when you measure something like this, it's not a straight line, it's a curve. So these are all these spherical triangles. And they will not be, you know, plane triangles this way. But a similar formula exists for spherical triangles. So it's only more complex, that's all. So the, that's a simplified formula. But for spherical triangles, you get a similar same story. Three angles, one side. And knowing the radius of the curvature of the earth, you can easily calculate. It's a complication which they accounted for. And, th and that is really the big deal. Uh, the, the answer to your question of okay. Mackenzie's survey versus Lambton survey. Uh, Lambton proposed this, which accounted for the curvature of the earth. And he said, I'm going to give you absolutely precise locations. Now, there was another guy who was actually already doing the same project of mapping Mysore Kingdom. But he assumed this formula and he assumed it to be plain. So, so the big deal about this was when you had plain surfaces work very fine when you are in around 50 kilometers, 60 kilometers kind of regions. But you want to go hundreds, thousands of kilometers, then you know you have to account for uh, the curvature of the earth and you know that it's a sphere and all that. And that's why this man got it was a tough sell for him, but he still got the money and he started this as well. The little bit of politics too. Okay? So why, what is what is the approximation here in the story that I gave you so far? And will, after this, it will all be history, no more science, no more nothing else. Okay? So, this does not, this is the question that you asked. It does not account for the spherical nature of the earth. Well, let me ask a simple question. How many of you think the earth is a sphere? No? Right? If you think it's a sphere, that's what we say. It's yeah, not only sky, it's sky. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If you know how you study, it's flat on the surface. Yeah, flat on the surface. Now, how many, how many of you think that is correct? That it's flat on the poles and bulging at the equator? It's assumed. It's assumed. I mean, that is what does it It's not true. Yeah. It's not true. If you're seeing photographs of comets, usually, that's a very wavy rough surface. It may be flattened at the poles, but it's kind of a peculiar, it's not that. Um, have a pen? Have a pen for us? Pen? Pen? Okay. 
So it's, it's not that oval shape you assume normally. It's that you know, peculiar, rocky kind of thing. The earth is exactly that. So when we say earth is spherical, earth is uh, a oval, earth is this and all, it's not. What? It's a geoid shape. It's a geoid shape, it's a special kind of geoid shape. Again, geoid is an approximation because it's a mathematical formula. Oh. So what these guys do, what that process is, you know, if you understood gravity, Synthesis is the shape of an orange. So, so, no, no, I guess the same. So, I guess the same. No, no, that's somebody else's. Can I write on this? No. That's what I want to say. Okay, no worries. So, basically, you know, when you say gravity, it's dependent on the shape of the shape of the water, right? So, you assume gravity to be constant because you assume it to be a sphere, etc., etc., etc. But the moment you say it's flattened with the poles and you know bulkier at the equator, gravity will be higher at the equator. So much, not so much, because the mass is there. If you assume a baby shape, it makes it different even more. Which means that gravity, whatever question we assume, varies place to place to place to place. What's the big deal about that? How do you identify you know, a, a vertical? Gravity is essentially pointing to the center of the object, right? So how do, you, how do you find a vertical? If you see mastery's built here, they will hold something called a plumb line, which is you know, a rope with a stone, with a whatever, and that, they say if it stands straight, that is the vertical. Vertical is basically pointing to the same thing. Right. But, so how, you know, the question that you asked about vertical actually comes into play here and all that. So if the earth itself is oddly shaped, gravity varies from place to place. So this vertical actually keeps changing, depending on you know, where they are. So this gravity in the Himalayas, because of the bulky nature of the Himalayas, the pendulum will swing a little towards the Himalayas. So gravity is basically attraction of water. Okay? So that keeps changing and they account for that as well. They account for errors because of it. They account for changes in temperature. They account for changes in errors in measurement. I measure something, he measures something, he measures something, it will all look different. So that, they account for that. They account for things like diffraction because these are telescopes, right? So if you have seen naked eye, you know, light supposed to be bent, so the object will not be where it is. And so in the, in, in the real survey, they accounted for all these kinds of things. And that is why they ended up with that 6 inch accuracy from the grass to the rest. The formulas that they used were extraordinarily complex formulas. And this man, man can define, actually, there are quite a few things. And uh, so you know, as, so to answer that question, as very good, actually, there's more than sphere. You know, there's a, a lot of other things that they are counted for. So I already told you about this, 1799, the Tipu story, and all that. Now read this. Uh, so if you want to measure, you know, for a triangle on the line, it only depends on if it is flat, then the farthest you can see is all you can measure. But if you imagine three hills, distant hills. You can go on top of the hill, the hills can kind of improve your visibility. Right? So it's like on top, if you stand on top of this building, you can see farther. If you stand on the ground, assuming none of these buildings were there, you could see some distance. So the higher up you go, the farther out you can see. That is, that is basically common sense, right? That's all there is to So what does and what this guy noticed was South India, this terrain. Uh, so that's actually the map, and take a second. So this is all British already, you know, uh, governed. It was Mysore, and this is kind of area that was left there. So when they defeated Tipu, they got this all this area to themselves. So which meant you can do a post to post survey without any hindrance, without having any issues. So if you see this map, these are all dated maps. Okay? Uh, you will see there are hills marked all over. Western Ghats is obviously all this. This is the Bangalore region, you will see all this. And there's a Tirupati, Shirati, all that area. This is like it. So this is the Eastern Ghats. Do they, yeah. uh, if this was mapped in 1800 data, how do you have the maps of the subcontinent which are 15 So these were, yeah, these were very inaccurate maps. So they were maps which told in some peninsula or which or, or were they reinterpreted from 
1850 onwards or something like that because whether they were inaccurate or not, yeah. triangular geographic representation has always been there in maps from 1450. Okay. Okay. So were, it, were they reinterpreted after? So maybe two, three things. Yeah. Good question. So there was already some knowledge of the layer mm -hmm. Natives knew this place. Mm -hmm. Natives were not so great at maps because mm -hmm. there wasn't this concept. So if you remember, you know, usually the way they show in movies, films, blah blah blah, all of that. Mm -hmm. Sand, somebody will say, oh, this is the river. On this river, if you go take right, you will get this and all. Right. There were maps uh, which, which commanders used, which you know, kings had and all that. But they were usually for the regions that they governed. Everybody had the same problem when they go to a new place. What is it looking like? And there were one of the problems with military expeditions. Correct. Right. In their own home ground, they honestly masters. Elsewhere, they learn. This is exactly what happened. So this map is actually a real map from 1795. They would have done multiple things to develop this map. If one has leveraged native you know, Indian knowledge. Second is, whenever they went on an expedition, a military expedition, they were actually surveyors who were part of the team. Mm -hmm. And as a, so they, you know, as they, they had something called group maps, which were among us, from here to here, how you go, a road was chopped out. And they said, we went this way, this is a road, this is a place, this is where you get water. It's based on all of that. And there were also some surveys. People had done some measurements even before. It was not that nobody knew anything. They were not accurate. Yeah, it was not accurate. Okay? And uh, so if you see here, South India in this region is full of hillocks. So this is a hill. What you are seeing here are all hills. Eastern Ghats. Bangalore region, Polar, whatever and all that, Western Guards and all that. So his idea was, uh, somewhere here is Chennai. This is Chennai. Okay, this is Bangalore, this is Bangalore. So his idea was, he said this whole region is, is has these blocks, massive blocks, which are perfect places to put our telescopes on map of the entire game. He said it's perfectly suited for doing this exercise. He was smart enough because he had traveled this whole area, he knew it, and he said this is an easy way quickly to map the whole thing. Okay, so a little bit about this man. Very interesting character. He actually has a, he was actually in the US, he's a Britisher. At the same time, British were conquering India, they were also in the US. In, 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 North America at that time, right? So he was in North America, and by by profession or rather by training, he was a bit of a mathematician, surveyor kind of a guy. He had that background. So he was uh, when the British conquer any land, the first thing they do is you not know, conquer land and distribute amongst poor, you know, their own people, other people, all of those kind of things. So saying, you know, you own this thousand acres, your farm is ten hundred acres, thousand acres or your Raja of this land, all that means you need to demarcate right. the area and say this is your area. That was his job in North America. He was not a, really a fighter, I mean they all did double duty, they fight uh, as well as do this. But he was doing that there in North America. So he had some experience in surveying already, though it was very inaccurate survey. What, what he did was, and, you know for surveying they used these telescopes, right? It's a very wrong word I'm using, we'll move to a better word later. One day he was, he was looking at it with the sun. Typically when you look at the sun, you put some filters. Carbon filter or eclipse, you know, you're watching eclipse. He forgot to do that. So essentially he uh, you know, uh, damaged his right eye. In, 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 in anywhere, even then and now, if you're physically, you know, in some way deficient, you can't be in active military service. He made him something called as a barack master. A barack master is like a you know, hostel uh, manager. His job is to make sure you know, the food is cooked well, the horses are stable is this, and you know, facilities kind of, kind of thing. Pushy job. For him, it was absolutely this one. And he was in that job for 13 years. But this guy was a passionate mathematician. And he was a surveyor. So he learned mathematics. So some of the stuff that I showed you, shape of the earth, gravity, blah blah blah, all of that. This was stuff he was learning. This was stuff that was evolving in Europe at that time. 
France, Parma, UK and all were actually, there were a lot of scientists there who were developing this. So he was very keenly following them and learning all of that stuff. Which was just more a passion than anything else. And uh, he has nothing else to do. What do you do sitting there as a barak master? Not much to do. He got a holiday for 20 years. And after that, like every other player, this one, like today, you know, our prime minister is demanding better from defense facilities, armies and all that. So what are you guys doing? Similar thing happened then. They said, all these guys who are in non-active service, either you retire and go away, or you switch over to active duty. So that was a proposal given across the board for everyone. And this guy had a choice of retiring or getting back on board into active service, irrespective of his uh, eye issue or eye was more a uh, so Actually, this guy could apparently see, he was not blind, but it wasn't too good, that's all. So he chose to uh, you know, continue in service and they posted him over to India. So he came over to India and uh, landed in the Calcutta, you know, they did a few things and all that. That's basically the background of this one. Finally, he ended up fighting people. Okay, so this is all I'm kind of uh, this one. In his own words, and this guy does sound a little bit of an arrogant guy, in those 13 years, he was teaching him some mathematics, and he said that would be the foundation which would one day bring him to the notice of the world. He claims this. So, in some of his documents. Pretty uh, response. So, you know, that's a little bit about him. So we'll move on to some uh, more stuff now about GTS itself. So the baseline that I mentioned, the first line in the triangle, that one was measured by him here in Bangalore at Kerala. Okay. Using a bunch of instruments, which also again have a very interesting story. So these so the British at that time they were in North America, they were in India, they were in the Asian region, they were all, they also went to China. So when they went, when they went to China, and the British, you know, typical way of doing it is, uh, you know, how do you, you take presents to the Raja, King, Emperor, whatever, right? It's very common practice. You know, try to win them over and you know, make them very favorable to you. Initially, you will say trade, and then you know you will establish yourself and then conquer the place. That's British strategy of doing this. So they went to China. The Chinese then, as now, were known to be experts in astronomy, science, mathematics, and Right. So the Britishers uh, at that time had developed instruments to survey Europe itself. Okay. And they were had some great astronomical instruments as well. If you remember Newton, everyone else, all these guys were into telescopes, there's that one. So astronomy was a good so science there. And the British guys had developed some very sophisticated instruments for astronomical observations. So they carried them as presents to the Chinese emperor, thinking the Chinese emperor would you know, appreciate them and admire them. It so happened. And also they were very sophisticated, so they had one guy who was a science teacher go along. And his, 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 this one job was to teach them the use of these instruments. They paid him a very handsome salary and all. <laughs> Went there, they discovered the Chinese were very, you know, they didn't care about it, number one. And they you know, said no thanks. So India was a fairly good base, all of that was sent back. And uh, this guy Lampton from North America actually landed in Calcutta. Calcutta was the main hub for uh, British friends, right? And this guy, because in Beijing, Peking, wherever, they rejected him. That guy with his instruments came back by ship to Calcutta. So they met each other. There must have been a small uh, crowd there. And you know, every night they get together for a whiskey, beer, or whatever. And you know, they exchange information. They know all this. So this guy knew that some very high class instruments were lying in Calcutta unused in Bangalore when he made the proposal for the survey and said I'll measure this basically. So that's so he got those, he paid a handsome sum for that from Calcutta, got it over here, and he used those instruments. Now these instruments that he bought in 1800 still exist. Anybody here from Deradan? From so Deradan? So the survey of the headquarters, the used to be headquarters used to be there, they have a museum there. Where they have these instruments even now. In Deradun. In Deradun. Why well, you corrected me on that before? <laughs> uh, so this is what they used. Okay, and I think somebody had a question about how did they measure this? So this is um, 
a link, a chain of links, very precisely measured, very high quality, non uh, rustable, you know, whatever, etc., and all that. So each, each link is about two feet. It's not about much, sorry, exactly two feet. Uh, and in all, so this is two feet. When you, when you open out this whole thing, it's 100 feet long. So when you stretch this out fully, it's measure, it measures exactly 100 feet. This is what he used to measure that place plan. And this is what, this is one of the things that he paid to get uh, enough from Calcutta to Bangalore to use for measurement. And the question that you asked about the land is always uneven, how do you measure that and all that. You got a whole lot of things, I'll skip all this, it's not, it's not important. But if you see this image, why, why that 6 inch accuracy is actually in this one picture. It's not, I don't, I don't know if it's very visible from there. You will see something which is running straight up here. You will see a man bending down and looking at something. There's a tent on top. If you see this horizontal stuff, it's actually supported on stands. All that visible from there. Yeah. What is it? Okay. Now, these are the stands that are used to support this. This is a plank. Yeah, this is actually one of those plants. So that chain is not held tight just like that. The chain is actually kept on a plank. Those planks are supported in you know, stool, stool kind of things like this. And end of that end of that chain, they put weights so that it's stretched tight. Yeah. And metal is going to expand. Right? So what was 100 feet at some temperature is going to be 100 plus something else and some other kind of thing. And India is a very hot place. So this tent is to keep the heat away. And these guys are looking at looking down on a microscope, which is actually showing there are marks. So there's, there's a scale there. They're looking down on a scale at on the end points of this. So what they do is they lay out the chain under the by the way, actually it's not very visible, you can see this man here standing, actually what he's holding is a telescope. How do you line it up straight? So this whole thing is lined up straight using a telescope. That's what we do, right? If you want to look straight, you kind of squint and see, not straight. If you want to see further out, then you put a telescope and see if it's aligned straight. So that's what this man said. So this is how they measure the baseline. Any questions on this? It's, it's okay. Just trying to remember, uh, but this is, so this was before the, what's the, thrombolite uh, or something that was that? The theodolite. So I mean, the 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 So they hadn't used the theodolite yet. They were, so I've been using the telescope just in a few of that. So it's the theodolite. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what a theodolite is. Yes, it's a Alright. So for the two base uh, points in Bangalore, at 100 feet, this would have got replicated. So what they do, so, so they, they stretch out that link, they put it on these planks, they line it up, they mark here this point, yeah. they mark here this point, and shift this whole thing over there. Okay. So what was the distance between uh, the baseline uh, uh, distance with the... Sorry. Good. And what is the shed, I mean, the canopy layout of the... Top thing, you know, you need to have something covered. So this is to keep the sun and the rain away. I mean, keep it as cool as possible inside. So what they do in these plants, they are actually embedded thermometers. So through formula, they can say if the if it is on one feet at this temperature, it is one point something else at some other temperature. Right? So the formulas they accommodate for expansion and contraction as well. So when they measure 100, it could actually be 100 point. 0001, the calculator. Awesome. Yeah. And the question that you so these stands, they are adjustable, you know, like the tripod, you can move up and down. So undulations on earth are the line, they adjust it, and they use this to level it. It's only 100 feet, I think 100 feet is not very difficult to, 
If there's some you know, minor undulations, you can make up for it. Correct. But how do they make sure that it's horizontal perfectly? Yeah. It can be in straight lines, but it cannot be in straight lines. Spirit levels on this plank. There are spirit levels, the thermometers, there are a lot of things. All of that is there. So that is how, please ask these questions, I forget these. <laughs> important, the very interesting things. Spirit level is just in some liquid. Spirit level is just a glass. If you go and see this later, there's a camera there. There's a small uh, glass tube with a bubble inside. There's a liquid and there's a bubble inside. Right? So you move the, uh, the, uh, this one up and down, the bubble moves either side. So when the bubble is at the center, it means you are And the spirit level is this thing. Okay. Um, so this is how they measure the basin. This is, so the question that you asked, they measure a distance of seven and a half miles. So 100 feet at a time, they measure seven and a half miles. It took them 57 days. They started on uh, 14th October, they finished on 10th December. The, the, the reason they took 57 days is because they have to set it up, they have to move in. In this plant click, they have to take all those readings and then move it forward again. They put a mark here, it's a very precise mark. They finish this segment, then they go to the next segment, then they go to the next segment, then they go to the next segment. But how will you make sure that it is in this shape? Yes. That's the point I made. Ah. Okay. So, what they do is, they measure one uh, segment, 100 feet, correct? Right? So, let me see this. So this is the first point they started. This is the end point of the 100 feet. For arguments, right? So if I'm looking at a telescope, I line this up. Next segment, I shifted. I have these two points for reference, so I'm going in a straight line now. So point one, point two, okay. point three, point four. So three with But I am not talking about the hundred feet. I am talking about the so sun point. That's what I mentioned. You have another paper? If I recollect right, if I recollect right. Like a drawing from this. If I recollect right, I think okay, that's yes, okay. If you don't mind standing here. Don't mind standing here. Okay. Let's say this is the first hundred. Correct. I put, I put a, I put a, so now I finish this. I put a flag staff, I put a pole here. I put a pole there. Now he goes there. You understand this? Now he goes, he goes to the next one. Okay. Yeah. So, so I have a pole here. I have a pole there. I'm looking at two at this one. I see to it, if he's moving off as and comes straight so I get the lens for that. I think even now also on the road some people standing and then take the measurements the same way. This is what I'm asking. What I'm asking? It's casual. See, see, every time I am uh, measuring, the, the, the end points of that I mark it. Every time I am measuring, I am actually, I mark it. And I mark it, all I need to do is, Put a vertical rod, whatever there. Next one there, next one there. And when I'm looking to a telescope, all of them should be lined up perfectly if they are in line. If one of them is off, that means they are not in line. So I show me the I see, for example, if one point was here to mm -hmm. and the other one was the one in Hindu. Yeah. The point is, how do you start from Henu and know that the direction in which you are going to Kyarpuran is accurate? Because this, the, the sub-segment is so small, Excellent. the meter here to there could just take Excellent. you away. Excellent question. I'll answer it in a few minutes. This is absolutely right. Is that the same question you had, Jaram, or different? This is line. So this is line. Oh. So, here's what I did. So, when I went back, these guys, the Britishers, they had the habit of recording everything. The 
daily work. And all of that they sent back to London. And the London guys published it, made six, eight, ten copies of that, sending out to everywhere, every outpost there. Those were actual books. Those books exist in libraries in the world today. Those books have been digitized, scanned, digitized, put up on the web. So Stanford, Michigan, or you know, India as well, University of Hyderabad, Madras, all of these guys, Google has paid money for them or whatever. Scan those, and that's the Google Books project. Mm -hmm. And they put it up on the web. So what I'm showing you is actually a scan of your phone. So this, this, this gives you information. You can have a visual look at this in uh, close later. So those 100 foot distances is each, this is 100, 100, 100, 100. So each day they log. And he, not very visible, he says I started on October 10th, October, October 14th. Measured this distance, and as I was measuring, and if for any reason, you know, these were the measurements. What was the temperature like? How much did he measure? Every day they may not have measured 100, you know. Or every day, I'm sorry, they didn't measure 100 a day, they measured something in a day. So every, every day could have varied. So this is a log book. And it's free. You can, you can look it up in the web from your phone today. So, and you know, using this, very simply, you can plot it back on Google Earth today. Use the same data, what he measured, reverse engineering back. If you know the starting point, lay it out sequentially, one after another, you will see where you end up. That is what, uh, that is all I did. And ended up in a few locations. Okay. Now, <clears throat> finally he measured, this, the only reason I am showing this is because of this. So that distance he measured as base y was 39,867.706 feet. 0.706 feet is uh, I think 14 and something inches. Third decimal. That's how accurate it was. Over a 7.5 mile diameter distance. And if you want to understand that, that is from Krishna's program to Agara, MEG, you know, if you in the blue firing range, mm -hmm. it's adjacent to your to that point. Over that, we measured something to this accuracy, 0.706 inches. That's the big deal. But, uh, uh, the, <laughs> but the, uh, the, the blue firing range, now Kyanpram is here, the blue firing range is here, Pendur is here. Oh, that's the triangle. That's the baseline, it's just the line. It's just the straight no line. Yeah. But, but it's, it's not straight, right? Hindur is... No, no, Hindur is still not in the... He's talking about the first line. It's only oh, base first line. Oh, okay. not Hindur. So just ignore that. Yeah, it was something else. Okay, okay. okay. Here, come to... Hindur. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, so I did this exercise and I caught it. So this is a, this is, this is Old Manaswar, this is Ring Road, if you're familiar with the area. This is a beautiful place where we have traffic jams, this is the Okay, so this is Dingashwar, one point. I've been, I've been calling it Kaya Pram, they call it Kaya Pram then, but it's Kaya Pram, Dingashwar for us. Today, Old Manaswar, Airport Road, Airport, and the uh, older airport runway, Bayandur Lake, comes straight down. This is a uh, main road, Anaram road to get this one today. This is, this is all the Hindur range. This means. So you see the straight line now? Straight forward, right? No big deal. They started from that one. They started from here. Yeah. And they proceeded. So there's a marker at the other end. So where they stop? Yeah, uh, some of these questions are giveaways, so I'll answer them. Yeah. Did they know they were going towards Agara? Like was yeah, the Agara going yeah, the beforehand? Obviously. So Ashish, you have a question. So the land actually is in this way. Mm. It's not flat, it's not level. Mm. 
Right. But if you see, if you stand here, and this is not fully visible, if you stand here, you can see this place. From here to here, you can see unanchored those days. Today, you cannot obviously. So, all that to do was from here, somebody over, somebody over here will hold a tall pole. They will stand here with a telescope. He gets this line. And now they proceed 100 feet at a time. They know they are headed here because they are lining it up all the time. Was it because the but pole was the farthest that, I mean, that was the farthest that they could see? No, no, the no, 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 no. See, the, the, he, has, uh, he has a mathematician, right? So he has calculated if you want to measure a country like from between Madras and uh, Bangalore, this thing called a baseline should be between 5 and 10 miles in distance. Anything smaller would have meant it's inaccurate. Anything bigger would have meant it's not useful. That's all. So 7 miles was around the, the best, you know, they wanted as a baseline measure. No other reason. At that time, this was at that time, this was not a different thing. It just so happened, and he chose this because this is exactly not so. From there to here is not so. He wanted to go in not so much. So start here and go down here. And how did they take care of building the How did they take care of building Fantastic question. Okay. So, now, along the way, this guy's remember is not a local. Anybody and everybody in Bangalore knows this is the terrain of a place. Hardly a place which is flat level in Bangalore. Lakes, gullies are very common. Mm. Now this man actually made a few fundamental mistakes. This was a lake or something he didn't know because it was dry at the time. So the lake must have been somewhere in this region. He must have thought this is a very conservative interest. Not only that point, over here in, in Sri Ramanagar, if you have seen, is a Bagman, there's a lake and just into Bagman Park. Right. Yeah. So he moved up there as well. So here as well. He went over a lake in two places, Melandu and and so what happens when he starts his exercise here, then you know after uh, he, he knows this equipment he is not using is actually greatest. So he is actually ordered for some very latest equipment from England. And England to India in those days, manufacturing of this is all a four year exercise, four year kind of a thing. So he's told you get your equipment in, in uh, 1804, he started this in, in 1800. Despite that, he says, I'll start the exercise in Bangalore because I have good enough. If not the best, I have something. And then he goes to Madras, comes back because he's going back east to west, right? When he comes back, he discovers these are lakes that are in Finland. And that he has new equipment. He says, let me recheck on what I did in four years ago. So this new fantastic equipment, not able to do it because there's a lake sitting. Now, actually, the story that is told, there's another story that is told, is see, the Indians and the British at that time are obviously not friends. Right? So, the story that is spun is the natives between those four years dug this lake to destroy it as well. So, you, you, you take what you want, but either he moved or somebody really played pranks on him. If that whatever it is, that's the story. That's the, story. The, uh, the line that is running across north to south, it is actually an imaginary line. It's not a physical line. It's not physical. So, so, for example, if you're doing it in 100 feet uh, slots, now how do you know that you're going in that direction? I mean, because there's no line to follow. No, that's what I mentioned. Yes. So, what they do, so, so what they do is when they start, you know you're starting here. You know, you're going to be finishing. Yeah. Right. So, when, you're, when the finish point, you put up a tall pole. If I can interrupt you yeah. here, sir. What a surveyor once told me was that surveying was done in the 90s. And it was a frame which was used for an alignment. That's the reason That's why they did not, no surveyor uses natural uh, 
landmarks because it's inaccurate. You can have objects of different sizes. So it's a flame which is used just like you strike a match in the night. And so that's, wrong. Wrong. So that's wrong in this case uh -huh. because using lamps and doing it in the survey came post 1830. That was something that Everest actually introduced, not lamp. The if you see the times here, these are all day times. The time is also marked on this. No, but they, yeah. For the alignment. For, for the alignment too. So the survey was completely done in daytime during Lambda's. And from that graph which you have like plotted of yeah. the configuration, yeah. it shows clearly shows that the thing is in line of sight. Which is line of sight? The starting point in the thing. That was by design. It was not accident, it was by design. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So uh, somebody asked what if something was in between. They would have technically been in line of sight. Oh, it was a question. Everybody has this problem. Can you all come here? Four of you. Come. Very simple. I have understood. So I am here. That's the point. That's point. That's it. That's it. So now I am starting here. Okay. This is my start point at Lingraj Pura morning. Okay. So this is where we are standing. Is in your cell. Clear? So now you two of you please go. Okay. He's too far away. So I use a telescope. Okay. Then I say. One of you call him. He is in line. If he is blocking PV completely, he is in line. So assume PV and him to be tall poles. That's all they did. Now I'll say, okay, now this, this distance, I'll start from here, lay out that 100 foot chain. He's still there. Every link in the chain I'm aligning to him. Which means I'm aligning actually to PV at in blue. So then if you don't want to come here. So this man is at 100 feet now. My chain is, that's all, that, that's all it expense. Right? So I put a mark here, put a pole here, put a pole there. Now say, can you move over there? Another 100 feet. He's, he's still there. PV is still there. Now I line up this guy with PV. Behind me I have already lined up. Right? So I was in line with PV there. I am in line with PV here. I bring him in line. So he's now the next 100 feet. Next time I this is how I do it. This is how I know I am in line with. I think the robots had already developed this. Fairly straightforward. Uh, this is how I do it. So, so, yes, so if, you, if, you see, if you see the way these walls are built, basically it's going to tie a uh, you know, thread, line up each brick along the uh, this way. <coughs> You're doing the same thing using optics instead of using a thread. If you are just using visual cues, it's too long a distance, right? So there are distractions. It's not. That, that is, is also calculated. Some of the is not. No, but when you are laying it down, so there could be refractions which could be a problem if you are using just visual cues. There is no visual. I don't know the real answer. I presume it was not so. Okay? Um, I still have one. Like, I know the, the point that Abhira was using for, was it like an approximation? Is that why it's such an approximation? No, no, no. Are you from that region? No. So, um, at the end of the blue firing range, far end, I forgot the name, my area, maybe you know Ashish? I'm from Ashish Arleo here. There's a hillock there. Right, yeah. It's a, a hillock is obviously an elevator. That's why it was I should go for that. So is there some something kept there? Because I used to go there, but I'm not. not this is that is the story. So, you know, you go to the next slide for the I can show you this on Google Earth how I did, but I think you're running short of time already. I'll skip it. So you know, if anyone wants to see how you actually do it, I can show it. You can speed up the uh, talk, sir. No problem. Sorry? You can speed up the talk. No problem. I can speed up the talk. Okay. So once I got this points, I went over there. To see what is there. It's so idea that one end actually is on top of that rock. It's a it's a it's a small hill. It's called the MEG rock. It's after lift, right? After? After the natural lift of Yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> so if you see this, this is a hillock. Okay. And now the hillock was where I ended up. I went there. I think the answer is pretty easy to guess. So this is the hillock. You seen this? Yeah. I think. This is 
He'll start his exercise in Madras using these very latest equipment he's ordered for. When he comes back to Bangalore, he'll redo those things in Bangalore to check if they are good or bad. That's for all. So, in, in, in reality, he actually scraps the Bangalore stuff. If you see that, you know, the genuine exercise starts in Madras, not so much in Bangalore. Well, that's a Madrasi's view. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. It started in Madras, not in Bangalore. So, so that's a Madrasi's view. Bangalorean's view is started here, he went there, then he came back. You make your call. I'm a Bangalorean for me, started here. Okay? I'll tell you a story. I was about to have a tea break or not. Can I have a break here? I can just start giving it to people yes. sitting itself. Yes. It's fine?
wasn't it also affected very much because um, in Chennai they actually were able to measure the land um, with the whatever, like the, uh, the, the baseline um, in relation to the sea level. And that's why Chennai became important. And well, that's not a big deal. But, you know, it's, a, it's, it's not a big deal. But it, it mattered because of the uh, the Sea line, sea levels are very variable. It's a very logical thing that you say. It's a very logical point you make. But here's what you have to do. If you measured something here, you can measure it anywhere else. 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 If you, if, if you thought Bangalore to the dust was 3,000 feet, 3,012 feet. Let's say you went to the dust, you started from here and then you came there. And your discord was not 3,012 but 3,014 feet. There's nothing special about it. All you have to do is restate. It's not 3,012, it's 3,014. Because now I know what exactly the dust is. You don't understand that. Right. <coughs> A lot of people are promoting the rest. So. <laughs> no, no, one more thing. Though. Now, if they have kept a, you said they would have probably kept a pole or something. Like when, when they initially did the baseline, the first point and the second point, they would have kept some poles or something. They would have constructed. So those were still there when they came back. So when they go, I think maybe yes. So when they leave, they build. In uh, rock and in the brick, oh. a solid wall, pyramidal thing. On top of that, they put a stone slab. On the stone, they carve out the X mark, the crosshair. Center of that crosshair is supposed to be the end. It, so it, it is supposed to be uh, much better than a pole. Weather, you know, weather is not going to destroy it. Humans, animals will not destroy it. It is a very solid structure. The first image he showed in Megri Circle, you can go and see, still see that, you put a compass on top of it, it still shows not perfectly. So, yeah, so I'll skip the, this one. Uh, so these are the primes. So you got a baseline, by the way, you see the line here, this is the baseline. From here, then you start reading these primes. And, how does he measure those angles? question that you asked about theodal edge. So what I've been referring to as telescope of this wire is a very rough way of saying that. They use an instrument called the theodal which is actually a telescope mounted on a wheel which has markings on it, degrees. It can scroll like this as well as it can rotate like this. And go up and down. It's an angle also, right? Sorry? It moves up and down, it gives an angle. So, yeah, if it moves up and down, you can read the angle that is moving up and down. If you move it sideways, you can read the angle. Right. This is all how you measure angles. Theory is very simple. Except, this device has to be extremely robust. Imagine him using this all over India. How many pairs of shoes do you think you need to walk from one end of India to the other end of India? Hundreds. Similar stuff is going to happen to this. You know, place it in one place, take it on the place, move it around. It has to be very robust. It weighs half a ton. You say it was, uh, your first line there says this half ton device was hauled up steep hills like yeah. the one in some of the oh, yeah. So, yeah. if you remember, awesome. <coughs> we went up some of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show you a photograph of that. <laughs> so, 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 this device, taller than a man, weighing half a ton. It was moved all over the world, all over the country. And if you see this, spend a minute on how sophisticated this is. You know, there are many schools here. Yeah. To make sure it's, there's levels all over here to make sure it's perfectly done. These are, these are actually microscopes. To measure, to read the readings, but the graduations here is so fine with all the scales and all that. To read accurately, you look down from here. Now, this is so big. How does anybody see this? There's actually a chair which is on this. So somebody sits on a chair here and goes to this. 
there's a there's a, one of these exists in any museum. This one is even now in Berat. Is it? It's still there. <coughs> Very same machine is Many of the uh, hill stations especially have uh, a place where a telescope is placed. I don't know. It, no, no, it's no. Uh, I mean, does it, does it have any sort of a correlation to what existed as a practice? See, hills are always good places for doing See, it. Uh, anyone of you are familiar with Survey of India maps, have you got? Gone and got Sokko Sheets? Yeah, Sokko Sheets. You will have a marking there. There are two kinds of markings got as a French uh, marking. A benchmark and the other one for the translation where they put the theory. So, um, what's the name for it? Not so much directionality. Compass mark. No, no, no. It's shown with a small triangular uh, icon in the map on the survey of India. Yeah, the benchmarks are shown with a icon. I have a map, I'll show you that. No, I'm trying to get the name. It's okay, we'll, uh, we'll see that as well. So, so this is backdrop. Okay. Uh, so this line, if you can see here, there's something called base. <coughs> this is the airport, this is our uh, got it? So from here, he measures a prime. Mm. Measures a prime, measures a prime, measures a prime, measures a prime. Goes all over the place. The first time is when he measures something on line using chain, link, whatever, all that. After that, he is only putting his theodolite in these places and measuring the angles. How does he measure angle? Just like we saw that. Okay. So if you see this, this is baseline, sound door. Sound is on a hillock. Mm -hmm. so anyone who has seen sound door, came to sound door, big door? <laughs> you climbed up to the top. Does so anyone else climbed up to the top? Yeah, no. climbed up, but long way. So you are all heroes. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> here's the thing. South Dunga is visible from Bangalore even now. Yes. Yeah. Not from here. If you are living on the Vijayanagar, Rajajnagar, right. Mysore Road site, you can cite it here. But if you just imagine, for example, you take the progression of the map. It starts with smaller triangles right. and then it progresses into a triangle which is because of the hills. You yeah, the hills are the hills. Hills. It's based on a few things. One is when you go to bigger triangles, mathematically it's better to go from small to big. That's one reason. Second is availability of hills. hills. Yeah. So that's a second reason as well. <coughs> I have a question. I mean, this baseline, initial baseline was done in North South uh, direction. Right? Somebody was mentioning even in British or other areas, they always started with North South as a base. See, it's, it's very simple. I'm going east west. Yeah, that's right. But baseline so was. I want my base to be this way yeah. because I want my triangles to come this If I build a base like this, I'll go this way. Exactly. But someone was mentioning here, and that's what I expect. Right? Just a little bit. It's very, very simple. If I want to go this way, Okay. I want my base to be this way. Okay. If I'm going this way, I want my base this So he chose to go from Madras to Mangalore, not in India. And the sound that the someone should be should go there and stand there. Excellent. So this is what he did. So this is the base. And then in those days, mm -hmm. the like is at the point I showed you, we can bring out a tower. That was called as Mandap Mantapa. We are the Mantapa. You know, if you know Kannada, we are his uh, swimming. Yes. So the story is that in that Mantapa, the shepherds, cowards, and all that tied a rope, tied a ball. So that was called Uyaga. So the first triangle goes to this place called Mantapa. Was this uh, mapping happening in parallel with the or was it one triangle at a time? Same triangle at a time. Because he had only one of those three Oh, he just had one. He had only one of those three <laughs> That's it. Like it took him four years to get. And it cost the British guys, I forgot how much, about uh, 3,600 pounds or something. So the whole region was mapped using one? Yes. The whole, India, right? the whole of India. The whole of India. Good. So now, so what happens is somebody goes there to the Tempe Tower on Magnus 
And then another guy goes to Savar Durga, holds a flag there. Tall post. <coughs> so using this theodolite, sitting here, they sight the pole. Measure the angle. And from Savar Durga, they move the theodolite to top of Savar Durga. Half a ton of numbers. Half a ton of numbers they put up. <laughs> Which is why they needed elephants, horses, bullock carts, hundreds of people to move But how, how we will communicate from uh, Maker Circle to that place? <laughs> Super point. This was a big problem. So what he will do, he will say, today is Sunday, Tuesday morning, 6 a.m. Please stand on top of the hill with the pole. Be there from 6 to 10 a.m. So he'll sit here. Typically, mango weather, you know, can be foggy, will not be able to see. He'll, he'll be made in those days before this lighting, shedding, and all came into picture. They do it actually through communication. Somebody goes, sits there, they hold it. After he actually met in three, four days for him to actually get the clear sight and take a reading. Then this guy goes or send someone and says, okay, ask him to move to the uh, he, has, he has marked out these points. There is a uh, recce which has already been done. So the guys have identified this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. So Savantuka is done. This guy goes to Savantuka, the other guy goes to the And they really so, have so to be an accurate point on Savantuka because the angle is the highest point. Uh, highest, yeah, the highest. So, highest point. And where the guy holds the post, he will actually build a super play in this one. Mark which we will see. So through that uh, theory light, you can uh, actually see that person. Yes, the pole or the whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So typically, you know, if you have seen military expeditions mm -hmm. of those days, there will be one guy with a pole with a flag flying on top and all. Highly flag mast, that's all. Actually, you they by the way, driving. Yeah. And if you see a road being constructed today, you yes. still have diploma holders yeah. who, are, who got these mm -hmm. instruments and, yeah. Yeah. and measuring. Yeah. They do not measure uh, uh, miles, but they measure in 100 feet, 200 feet. They have a small uh, wooden thing on which they land. Yeah, 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 they keep yeah, going on, there's a guy standing yeah. with a... So the same things are still practiced while you're building your roads right now, including the say, including that leveler. It's the same. Now it's called Total Station. Total Station. Uh, they don't Total Station. They don't want to see your light anymore. Total Station. Yeah. 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 Sorry? Are you a No, I'm an You're not? Mr. Uday Kumar, when did the plane table survey come in? Plane table? Ah. So if you saw what I explained in terms of triangles, yeah. that's actually a concept you can apply on paper. No, no, I know, but when did they start using plane tables? I think it was 100 years before. Before uh, Theodore Light? Before this. Because one of the... Not before Theodore Light, uh, before trigonometric survey. The form of the earth. So that means plane table was earlier. Long time. About 100 years at least. Ah, well, what one of the geologists mentioned to me was that uh, basically uh, plane table surveying was used to survey rivers first. So that you work from the delta region and work your way up. Possible. So how much time is it? So, uh, so somebody who asked that question. How will they communicate from the side from here in South Africa? This is how. So it was a day's exercise, multiple days. It may have rain, it may, there may have been fog, fall, you know, and whatever other reason, they were not able to sight it. It took days. Once they sighted, once they were able to sight it, they could take this measurement angle. This guy then goes on to this place, this guy then shifts. So they move the pure light from here to here. Now, uh, please, you know, if you're familiar with Bangalore, please look at the distances of here. Make this up. Savandura. This one. Mulapun Betta. Where Kondeshwara statue is. Stamandura. Chandra. 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 Can you imagine? From Mekri Sattva, you can see Savandura. From Savandura, you can see. Bhavneshwara statue. So in the theodolite, light, actually his point is not the statue, the hill behind the theodolite, the hill behind the statue. 
in these records, he clearly like, says, I could cite the you know, long national statute. So if you agree to some of the word, try this instance. Go to the top, take a bilateral, you can cite it. Strictly speaking, I think even from here, from Bangalore also, we should be able to cite some of the word. With a good, powerful thing as well. But the only difference was that in those times, we didn't have the kind of pollution we had. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so that's what it is. So, and if you see this side, uh, the one below Sao Durga is citing Mysore, Chamundi Hills, uh, sorry, uh, Chamundi Hills, Hills, top of Chamundi Hills. What's the one to the south? The point to the south? Which one? Chamundi, Chamundi. This is Mysore, Chamundi. The one to the south, the one to the south, the one to the south, the one to the south. The one exactly down. This one? This one? This one? This one? This one? This one? Then something says, then the movie. No, no. This is Malay Gata. Technically, that would be possible. This is Malay Gata. If you see on top of the Hilam, there's a temple there. Yeah. There's one place. There's a place called Devan Bhatta. If you're from the Anikal region and all that. There's a Devan Bhatta. Malay Gata National Park actually extends to India. This is Devan Bhatta. You know, I think for many people, it may be uh, a bit difficult, but if you still go to mountains, uh, you can you can still cite, uh, if you go to Uttarakhand or Sanchal, you can cite for uh, 150, 75, 100 kilometers on a very, very clear day. So I don't think that's... No, you can actually see the curvature. You can even see the curvatures if you, but that's if you really are yeah. at a long distance, you can see 100 kilometers. Uday, yes, yes. you said uh, this is, this exercise is done to Collect the tax. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that's the ulterior motive. Okay. <laughs> the, um, this guy actually has a different motive. <clears throat> he is a scientist. Fundamentally, he is a scientist. Okay. What at that time the big thing to do, like you are saying, you know, reaching Pluto was a big deal. Those days, measuring the curvature of the Earth was the thing to do. How curved is the earth was a big topic of discussion. So from one, they called it as one arc, etc, 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 and all that. So through this means, he could actually calculate the curvature of the earth. So his, his motive really for this exercise was that. The way he told it to his bosses was, I'll give you a fantastic map which you can use for military excursions, for collecting tax, for uh, looting the minerals, for doing that, doing this. That was the, the project. <laughs> That's where we are. So, so from these, from these, uh, from these points, they started deriving uh, the land uh, records and all those things. So, 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 his, so his proposal was actually this: yeah. I will develop this map of triangles. Subsequently, you can start smaller expeditions of surveyors who fill up these maps using the same logic. So he spent, uh, this is like say 70, 80 kilometers. He says, okay, now you, should, you have another expedition which you fill up with smaller triangles. That's how we build the whole thing. Which ultimately will boil down to forest, farm, village, everything. That's all. And there was no theodolite used for those smaller Lesser, smaller, smaller theodolites, not so this one. Because the accuracy here was not a big deal. Again, you know, you can't use the same thing. So there was enough multiple projects. For these, uh, but how did they measure the Mount Everest? Because you can't anyways go up. Well, I'm happy you're asking, which means you are still interested in the talk. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So those triangles, data you know, of that is here. Base, what is the length of the base? We saw that number there, 39789, whatever. Measure the three angles. He gets the two sides of the triangle. Shifts, goes to the next place. So keep building the triangle. So what angles they measure is open, your line, anyone can move it up like this. So using this, a reverse engineer the same thing. So on Google Maps, I plot this line, you saw that. I plot two lines, which show is this one, and I see where it meets. Go there and see what is there. This is all there is to the exercise. If there is something, you are very happy. If there isn't something, then you kind of 
lose interest. So this is South Dakota. So I plotted that. It landed up you know, on top of South Dakota. So we went, the other time not the same time. Okay? I, went, I went there. If you're, as you're climbing South Dakota, this is the peak. You actually climb like this and then go. Extremely steep uh, rock. Very, very tough to climb. So, so Ashish I and some other friend had gone and we have bought it a few times. Once, because of the moss on the stone, and it's very, when it rains, there's a lot of moss, slippery and all that. So we, we could go. Imagine carrying that half front device, I think this is about almost a kilometer. That, uh, from that region. So what did we find there? This is what we found. Is this tower? It's a Nandi, uh, this one. Anybody see anything special in that photograph? Unfortunately, the text is that without looking at it. Okay. So this, which is this. Okay, that's, that's, that's that's the, that is the structure that I have built. It matches the latitude longitude to the last decimal. Take your phone, take a GPS device, go stand there. And what I showed you in the previous uh, this one. <coughs> From this, they actually can the lactic velocity. Matches that for the last decimal. Yeah. It exists. What has happened is though, the mark stone, wherever they went, they cut a square stone about three feet. On that, they cut a two lines across this, put it there, and then went. Yeah. This is the long lines there. It exists to this, this day, it matches. Thousands of people walk up this hill in a year. They go to this temple, they, they admire the view, they think how oh, wonderful. They probably stand here, they probably do all kinds of things and come back. I have no clue what this is. And here's the numbers triangulation point. From there, they put that particular on top of this, they looked at the magnificent point. From there, they looked at Nanda Chavandi and they looked at Gopich. Okay? <clears throat> so make it a little bit more interesting, I'll show a video of it. The whole thing was funded by the government, the, the British government. A lot of funds are used. So this is the one I'm talking about. The bag is sitting on that. That's the hill. Can you imagine going up that hill? See how foggy it is? There's no way we could send back from from there. Like
But where it's in a remote place, nobody around, and all that, they have been usually destroyed by ransom. It's in this case, because of the, where it is located, it's also possible the weather kind of disordered. You know, they, if you see a lot of mud there, somebody must have pulled out a stone, rain would have washed away the rest of it. But most places it is ransacking more than anything else. Why just for pressure? Okay, so that was the video. I'll quickly go through that. Now, when you go through these trials from one place to another place, the inaccuracies of the errors keep building up, right? So what he does is, in many other places, he, he measures those baselines just to check and recorrect and get to make sure accuracy is not lost. So in about 10 places, Bangalore, Kanthal, Kajal, Kichi, Gurti, Guntakal, sorry, Kunta and Bidhar, he measures this. The dates are given, distances are given and all. So the question you ask about why 7 miles, most of them you will see are between 5 and 10. So if you are from any of these towns, villages, good exercise to go see if they still there. Okay. Um, so let's get this. So his, so his proposal actually in the beginning is to go from Chennai by Madras to Mangalore. And then if you remember, he says, yeah, keep coming in right up to the top. Now, after his time, during his time and after his time, there are other expeditions that are spun off. Go up from like, you know, if you see here, there's some coming here, there's some coming there, there's some other lines coming here. This is how, this is the Great Big Mount Peak Survey project in whole. It didn't happen, so this is how, over 150 years, they built a map of India. This is how they built each perfect map of India. That's the story here. But in in uh, one. So when did it complete then? I think they got it off or officially got it off in 1920 something. But uh, the southern part of India, there are a lot of I mean there are a lot of mountains, hillocks, hills and all that. But as you go into the central part of India, it's, it's mostly plains. Right. Hmm. So, think, uh, it's so what they did was, if you've been to some of these places, including Calcutta, they built towers. Forty, fifty foot towers, like lighthouses we have. They built those kind of towers and they use those for measuring. In South India, there is another interesting thing that happened. Temples are very common. Temples are GoPros. Go. North, you know, that's not the easiest one. Where they could find the hills, they put the theodolite on top of the GoPro. <clears throat> and this is what they did in Tanjavu. In Punjab, we have the Videshwara temple, massive uh, temple, this one. So on top of that, there's a rock, it's a no, black, no, round rock. On that, they put the theodolite. The point is, they raised the theodolite using pulleys and ropes and all that. When they were raising it, the, the rope broke. So the theodolite crashed into the gopro. It was in a box, select package and all that. It damaged the theodolite. Such a precise instrument, right? Imagine it going and then writing a rock or this one, obviously, would be damaged beyond uh, this one. But this guy is a master engineer. Also. So, what he does, he has that, but he's not there. His assistant at that point is doing the survey. He has it brought back to Bangalore. MEG center is their main camp. It used to be called Dorkunta. Even now, the area is Dorkunta. Okay. In MEG center, he parks himself for some 60 days. Completely dismantles the whole thing. Every screw of it, we does you know, whatever you know work he can do in terms of local, you know, getting some uh, this one to build a part, puts it all back together. Check, calibrates the machine, finds it good enough and resumes. So the other Bangalore connection is that theory like coming back to Bangalore, getting fixed here, and going back. <coughs> Just a story, but that's what it is. <coughs> so it's how they use these GoPros. Now, interestingly, in North, if you've been to Agra, Agra is plain. Taj is a place which stands on. Right? So, there is a proposal to mount it on the Taj as well. Luckily, uh, luckily for uh, this one, that's considered as an anywhere. If you put a Britisher carrying a third light on top of a GoPro and all that, it is considered 
sacrifice, it's not clean, it's not holy, it's not okay. So he there is persuaded to do something else. You ask a good question. So these villas are usually owned by some local uh, chieftain, Padega, whatever. So you had some Vaspati king, you had some Yalanka king, you had some Osur king and all. This guy needs the king's permission to go on top. Right? He can't just barge in there. Because many of these Nubar are friendly territories. They are not British conquered territories yet. So he has a problem in convincing in a few places. Especially in uh, Tamil Nadu side, you know, in the Madras side. The reason being, the telescope, if you see, any telescope, a far <coughs> distant image comes very near. Number one. Number two, it inverts the image. Unlike a binocular going to straight, in a telescope is inverted. So everything is upside down. Now the local chief tent is there's a rumor that goes around in the whole area. These British fellows are looking at our women. Once <laughs> they're looking at them upside down. Upside down basically means unclothed. So the local chieftains don't give permission to go to those temples, yeah. to, go, to go to those uh, so It's a high vantage point. Right? You can look down on the palace, you can look down on whatever, you know, the bathing, uh, this one, you can look down on the river. That's another uh, this one. Hmm. So the map they build these masonry towers. Okay, so that is the GPS story. I'll speed up a little bit. I think it will come to the S1. So they go all over the country, and you know, that was in the 1800. But in the 60s, around the 1830, the technology completely changes. Same as today. Very good, they have equipment, better telescopes, better this, better that. So they got rid of these half ton devices. They have only this figure, this one. Things have changed. And they come back again to fill in those triangles, etc. and all that. At that time, in 1868, they take the task of re measuring that baseline only to make sure it is correct. Because now the measurements are all much better, they can reuse those things and all of those things. Right? So they measure one more. And this is where it gets interesting. Actually, they measure ten more. This is a completely different lesson from what we saw. Lambton dies in 1823. These are other guys who take over. So they measure in you know, Canada, Bida, some places we can't mention, Karachi, etc. Et they come back in 1865 to 1868 to measure in Bangalore. And that what they measure has a slightly not much more sophisticated equipment. Skip through this. The difference is they use something called as um, <coughs> compensation bars instead of links. They have solid bars which measure 20 foot. And those bars, there's actually two of them in here. So because of heat, one is brass, one is iron. Because of heat, one will compress and one will expand. But this hinge will also move this way. So the center of the hinge always stays there no matter what temperature it is. So that's a cool day, hot day, whatever day, it always measure 20 feet from this end to that end. Just keep this, but say that no technology changed and things improved and all that. And this is the same, uh, this one that I was showing. How they measure it, 20 foot at a time, they measure whatever it takes. And this data again is available, you can use all of that. Now, when, what they discover is, when they come back in 1868, in Bangalore, the railway tracks are, they started laying the you know, railway lines. So there's a Krishna's from railway line in between Hingraj Pram and whatever. And city has grown. So we don't get that nice clean line of sight from Hingraj Pram to Adara. So they say, okay, this is now no more valid. We can't use this. We can't re-measure this. We will do a new one. They go to make, so that is where they go and they measure a new one which is actually between Mekri Sarta which is the southwest end and the other one which is near the end of the road. Okay, so this is the most beautiful part. If you saw this, this is supposed <coughs> better or better land. So the choice of land was better. This also need not be, see north south is only a no, it's, a, it's an ideal condition. You don't have to be north south, it can be north east south west, whatever. So they choose a north east south west direction. So you plot that, and they added one more uh, step in this. This is important to know because we want to go to see these places, what's there still. That's the entire length of the baseline. 
two points in between. They said are intermediate points. And to they measure, they put the bars, they go from here to here. Now that the line was not such a heavy thing, etc. etc. Could be really sure this was the same distance as what they measured. They used that theory line to revalidate it. So they built angles, they built a triangle, okay, and then they check what should be this distance and all that. So they said double checking kind of mechanism. So in these spaces, so this is the baseline, these are the minor triangles, what they call it, to revalidate this, and they put in place these structures here. One is a uh, you know, one is a handle, one is a gubi, rather this is not a big gubi, this is not a gubi. Some of you are really Vasamunda, Vidlali, all names familiar to old manuals. They all have new names, but uh, that's what it is. So I did this and then I went over and I saw what is there. They also described, okay, I'll uh, read this at leisure, at the southwest end, what structure they built. How did it look? Was it strong? What size was it? Etc. Et so complete description is detailed on what it looked like. So you know what to expect when you go there. I, so this was the first one. Southwest end. This is Lenti Circle. This is Saite Bolari one. This is the Sira one. This is the park. So this is the Lipagara. And this is where it showed us on Google Earth if you measure that and if you so when I went there, obviously I couldn't find the structure that they had built, but there is this, and there is a survey of India stone there. It says that it is where it used to be. And this has been rebuilt. So this is well known. You know, most of the big story behind this. So other end point, you know, which is anybody here from that region, Endor, Banaswadi, Kalyan, yeah? Kalyan. Kalyan is close. <coughs> um, if, you, if you travel up that road, there's Biozine and there's a few other things if you go for the. It actually is the new road, the camp guys take to the airport. It's the cargo road. No, other end. It goes to the same thing, actually. It goes and joins the other road for other. The camp guys take it. So I went there, and what I found was this. In a vacant site, there is a small stone building. <coughs> Overgrown which stops all of that. Yeah. On top, and you know, interestingly, the, uh, the description that I showed uh, it says station is marked in the same way, whatever, and there's a stone pillar which is being built inside the room, and there's a stone put on top of the roof okay. as to mark the endpoints of that. So when I went there, uh, you know, the, there was a factory there, I just said this was a factory. So I couldn't climb up there, I asked for a ladder from the factory, they gave a factory. The, the factory guys came along, we went up, and what you saw the video there of somebody cleaning the weeds on top of the roof and all that, was those people. On top of the roof is this stone. It's a square stone, if you see two lines. This here is the other end point which is that 0 0.067 feet, inches, whatever we saw. That's what it is. And how do I know exactly that? You put a phone there today, it will be like the launch tool, etc. which matches exactly what is in the records. Inside the room is this. So what will be here is, this is a pit. Yeah. Okay? They will put a few tear light on top of this. That's where it will be seated. Center of this is where the center of the tear light will be. From here, they were seeing the other point. At that time, there will be more room expect just the open line. Side in the other place. Mark the place the point on the ground. Build this whole, uh, this one. And build the pillar. You know, what, uh, this, this round circular pillar on that. Just like we saw the other stone, it will have been on small on top of this as well. Now, the story I gave you about pressure hunt, this is a perfect thing, right? Just the room by itself. Small room, you know, there's nobody living there, abandoned, or God knows what. One day, somebody in the village would have said, There's a you know, this one there, let me go see this. So that's the. Uh, I can play that video again, but we'll just waste uh, 
And so the first one I showed you already, you know, front view, top side, and that is one of this. This is the place that that old man during that debate was mentioned. Very, very, very few people know this. Yeah? Uh, what's so big deal about this? From, if you remember, if you see the story I gave you, if you are a science student, if you are an engineering student, whatever, this is the equivalent of Taj Mahal for you. Equivalent of? Taj Mahal for someone else. It's so holy, it's so special. And all the story I gave about measuring up to Everest, mapping the country, and all that, this is an ideal one. We must, you know, really, really appreciate and treasure this. It's right now abundant, it's now right now in ruins. But look at the part it played in the history of our country. Amazing. There was a battle that triggered this, and from there, you know, so many things happened, and we have this. Uh, sadly, nobody there knows this. This is Panchayat land. It's completely overgrown with weeds. Uh, but because it has this funny uh, look and feel to it, and it is Panchayat land, nobody has encroached on it yet. Though they have broken in and stolen stuff, it lies there. So if you look at the story that I gave, Atala Kacheri, Lal Bar, Kabul Bar, sure they are all big two things, wonderful places. This one is really telling you a story of the country. It's a part of that, it's external. You only understand it when you know the story. I give you one and a half hours of uh, background material and you now get this. Otherwise, it, uh, it's, it's, it's abundant for that reason. Okay? Quickly go through the other stuff. How do I know that it's the same place? There are other documents which give a layout for a similar room. This one is in Kalyanpur. Almost the same dimension, same layout, and all of that. So not only matches from a GPS, longitude, latitude, description, etc. You know the layout of the building is a bit similar structures in other places in the country. So where is this? Uh, Central India. But we should be seeing similar structures in many parts of the country, right? Correct. <coughs> so, how many does it exist around this? No, the, the, the ones who really have to be proud and protecting this are the survey of India. Because that done, everyone else was a part of the survey of India organization. That, after British times, still continues as survey of India, but now it's Indian only. Uh, I think as like any government organization, they're busy at doing some other things than protecting heritage. So no EAS or anybody takes care of this They must be having record for their more possible. I'm sure there are a few guys who know about this, but who's going to give them money for protecting this? In fact, you know what? So they have, they, they have their day jobs to do. Okay? They, both, they also have Google. Huh? So they also have Google to <laughs> Yeah, so actually they know and they verify this I think once every 15, 20 years to, to know if they still exist. And I'll show you and, and I, and I'll show you a photo of why I'm telling this. So, now the other points, if you remember I we kind of showed this. Yeah. So I said this is the baseline, they use some other points in other places and all that. And go and check those places as well. So what I found, one was in the Nalavara area. Yeah. The description matches exactly this. This is somebody's site, it's a 30, 40, 30, 50 site. Other 30, 50 site, that's it. Sitting here is all stone, uh, the stone like this. Now, when they built it, actually they would have seated that they would like on top. If I had a stone roof, they would have seated it on top, taken the measurements and all of that. If you read the description, it says they left a similar stone on top and similar stone on the floor. So I saw this place and it matches exactly everything. You know, the, it says six foot stone structure, wonderful type, this, this, that, and all that. And the light and all all matching. So I pray that uh, the neighbor lives, the owner lives, it's private property right now, owner lives close by. So I went and asked the man, uh, is this yours? Do you know what it is? He said, yeah, I know. It's, a, it's our uh, family temple. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like a whole like a temple. You know, when they finished it, they were to this one, it definitely can pass for a temple. Most probably it would have been, you know, that village headman's family is what it is. Somebody sometimes kind of quietly you know, made it their own. And to give it some sign, they built this. 
the little dark bar, every, uh, uh, you know, from Monday, we go that way here. The thing is, I can do that, not more about the things. And I'm not a very religious guy, so for me, this method has very little meaning compared to this. That's why it is safe to you. <laughs> <laughs> you are absolutely right. Now, when I told him this my story, I actually did tell him, maybe it was a stupid thing to do. I could see the man's eyes light up because it's now six, seven generations. They, they were big landowners in that area. This is one of the few sites that they still own. And the guy is holding it as, I think, wanting money to sell off and get some money. The moment he realized it's not a temple, I think he was happy to say, I can sell it to peace now. I don't know like that, this is two, three years back. I don't know what it is, but my, it's probably, it, the reason it stayed for so long was because they thought it was a temple. So, uh, the similar temple, or similar type of structures are still there right, in other places? Yes, and uh, that's what I'll show you now. So, I went to the other places as well. <clears throat> There's another place called Racha Reli, which is beyond, you know, behind Maneta. So, you go there, unfortunately, I couldn't find anything, I just want to open it. Possibly it exists, and I've not been able to look at it. Okay? So these are the coordinates of those other places. I've been to a few. You can go and check it if it's in your neighborhood. Few that have been destroyed, few that exist. What I see as destroyed is when there's a water reservoir or something, or even it's gone. So we'll see photographs of this. And this is all in the city. So these are all the, uh, the, the six feet structures, right? It should have been either that or something similar. What they, have, what they look like is what in the page I showed you, the clearly documented back and said this is how it looks. And if you see this, these are all Melbourne areas. Yetla Lake, which is Sanjayanagar today. Basanguda, which is, I'll show you a photograph of this, of Hemal Lake. Bachar uh, which is actually here, you know, the Fraser Town area. I know this, I know. I know Monday, I know Monday. But Chilvetal there is a pumping station, sir. That is only been converted into a pumping station. Sure. Yeah. yeah, perfectly right. Vishnu Nagin Ali, Nanara, you know that very well. You know where Maneta is. That's the photograph I showed you. Okay? So you can take this, you can go and see this as well. And this is basically showing what exact what was there. It says the station, you know, what was one of the places where you know, three feet high or something. If you go check on those and uh, being able to check on those, get the link. What do we go find today? <coughs> Sadly, I find this. This is temple compound. So the other way you can actually, and this is what we traditionally continue even today, there is a public uh, land. The best way to make it your own is build a temple. <laughs> That's what these guys have done. My guess is these stones that what were used to build that bomb then. I still have it lying there because temple stones you don't throw away, you can't destroy it. So they reuse it for something. That's what it is. Okay? And uh, this is a very interesting story. This is the quarry that I showed you. So what they built uh, was on top of a hill. So this is a of Sampiyarani. It's kind of Sampiyarani if you are you know, on comes on this. This is a hill, but in the 150, 60 years, like all hills in Bangalore, they all saw like a good, high quality granite. Quarrying is absolutely very common. So the hill, this, this is all quarrying. All the stones have been taken away. But we are a very religious people. There is this on top. They have not had the courage to take it off. So I asked this, uh, you saw in the video some ladies, religious, I asked them what is this? Good bumblas. <laughs> okay? Now the beauty of it is it's hard to get to. And now since it lies within the uh, city, quarrying has been abandoned and all. So it will stay. Now on top of this lawn, this is on top of the lawn, there's this pit. On this pit there are a big one pillar with a stone. But robbers being robbers, they are not religious. They destroyed the pillar, they excavated the pit, thinking there will be a treasure of God. I'm just guessing that this is going to be. Okay? 
matches to the coordinate to the point in the branch to the gave you this Goulet and you will see this. So this is again something, you know, if you are, this is this is core of Bangalore's history. Think back again, later on in you know, measuring the country, Everest. You know. So the video that you saw was I think you know, quite impressive. You have seen that all out of the area of Let's get the video. Hendo. I spent it, I know that you know, AI. So I went there. I think you know the old people here will know the story very well. There is not one hill there. Because that place was called Hendor Bande. Bande is you know, stone. Stone quarry. Hendor Bande used to be one of the biggest quarries in Bangalore. Today it is playing, you know, level ground. It doesn't exist, but that's what's there. But the beauty of it is the land still exists because it's still government land. Government land. Yeah. Gubi, same story, but this is actually Gubi, which is again you know, off the uh, window. It's not the Gubi Sila that's there. This man's slightly better. He built his own private temple. Okay. So, what you said about much of it, this is the water reservoir. So, the big reservoir, obviously, the process destroyed. So, this is about the baselines. So, what you saw was three baselines. A few photos about the triangles. They also did those triangles, right? And we saw some other. Similarly, it's a few other places. Now, this is again you know, very interesting. One of those triangles ended up in a place called Tukun Buddha. By the name, you know. It's basically Tukhan Buddha, it's Muslim's uh, hill. I didn't register anything, I just kind of ignored it for quite some time. And then I plotted it, it ended up in Whitefield. In those days, I used to work in Whitefield. And what I plotted ended up right opposite my office. This is the building I worked in. And this is, this is where it showed up. Area where which I'm very familiar with. I've been going to that place for about 10 15 years. Were you with Graphite India? This is Graphite India. This is the road. This is the uh, Graphite India road. This is Graphite India. This is the road that goes towards the hospital, my day hospital, SAP Labs. There's a place called RMZ next and there's a patrol road. So I used to walk in RMZ. Okay? <coughs> From here to here, this is less than 100 meters. Very curious about the so I went I went there. By the way, all of these places are on my commute from home to our Whitefield. So I live in the other end of the town. What I found there was this. Do you want to say next to SAP Labs or some other you know? Opposite to SAP Labs. Back opposite SAP. Opposite to SAP. Oh there's yeah, next to hotel there's some open behind infinity as a good sign by night. Okay. If you're familiar with the area, I do know there is a reservoir there. I thought, man, this place is also destroyed. Reservoir is not just like we saw the other one there. They were destroyed. Went there, I found this. Looks very similar to what you saw that hill. On top is this. Okay. If you see what that is, it is a circular thing. Again, you have had a column there, put a stone there, and all that. Now, what you survey out there guys know about this? If you can read something here, it says Survey of India, I forgot the name, some Sharma, whatever, <coughs> visited this place on March 11, 1993. <laughs> so they know the fact. And it's very easy. So I looked up that guy's name on Google. His phone number was one of them. He's now living in uh, the I called him up and I said, sir, did you visit this place? He said, yes. But he was very concerned because the survey of India has a lot of very implications. He said, who are you, where are you, where are you going, where are you asking all these questions? I said, look, I don't care, all I'm looking for is validation that you know, this is what it is in the situation. So I think they go once every so many, you know, maybe in a decade or whatever, they send teams out to check if these places exist. That's the real stuff. Maybe, you know, some of these places, they use it even today. And that's the last part of my presentation.
So I have a real background on Skipper. These are all data on YouTube. We can look at it in the region. So we saw this on the thing. That's the model. If you saw the previous photo, it resembles very much that. That's why I'm so confident this is what it is. Yeah. Uh, there's one place which is really well kept, not destroyed. Anybody from Mosul here? Yeah. So I, I, I have been to this place. Yeah. You've been to this place? Yeah, yeah. yeah. marvelous. So there's a hill there, which is the on top of which is a temple. That's the Chamber 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 Chamber. Chamber. It's at the right side of the road where you're going from here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. On top of the hill was a place which is also one of the corners of the crime. There, the beauty of it is it's adjacent to the temple. It's a very popular temple, and that's a, I think, you know, a thousand year old temple. So no one's going to touch anything. And luckily, they didn't build anything sunk in the ground and all that. All they did was they built this. Straightforward. Just one column. On top of that, they put a stone. On the stone, they put a monk. And if I remember, I and, and, and saw this uh, 10, 12, 15 years back. I studied in Ozo. That's why I went there. <laughs> okay. I remember it says this is the topest something. It's written, written, written there. Yeah. Believe it or not, these stones are coming from 100 years, 150 years. This is documented. They actually say six foot, stone slab, fingered mark, blah, 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 all of that. And this is my native place too. So I must have passed by this thousands of times in the, in the last 45, 50 years that I've been around. And I went there, I looked it up, and I found this. Beauty, beauty of this is it's fenced out. And the reason it's fenced out is not evident here, but I have a video which I think from now we already overshot largely. Uh, is because there is a telescope on top of that hill. TBS guys. So this is the this one. If you see the temple, this is the zombie car. Behind this side is the temple. The other corner is a telescope, modern day telescope, which TBS has installed, used by students and for their this one and all. Uh, so do you know the approximate year on which uh, it was installed, sir? The telescope? Yeah. I think it must be pretty old, sir. It's a the new device there must be from the 60s or 70s. Uh -huh. My guess is there was a telescope even before. But uh, it's not an icon telescope. It is, it is a telescope which is actually today owned by the Ministry of Astrophysics. Okay. Maintained and owned by the Ministry of Astrophysics. <coughs> okay. So this is what would have been all over the country marking those corners of crimes. And you know the way you measure it. Put your phone there, look at the coordinates and you check it. No big deal. You can do it on a map, you go physically, put it, and you know what. Okay, so this other place called Devil Beta. And this was an accident, you know, we were actually going for walks, we happened to go in this region. And I remember this is what it was, and we went up. Devil Beta is a beautiful hill, just like this was so thing, rocky. There's a temple, but the place they built you know, is actually way off from the temple. It's a very small temple, it's not like the Hosur temple. And they are uh, like our people, we have this idea of being stones and stones. This is the old, uh, this is the whatever god. I get a child that I do this god, you give it in my business books, I do this kind of thing. So they put this all over. Very cutting edge stone mount. They must have borrowed some stone from here and we used it. <laughs> but uh, this is a close up shot. Here at the center, there is still a hole in the rock. There is no hole anywhere else. And it, you put a phone there and it will match. The GPS contacts will exactly match. So these are the things which have been destroyed. And yeah. another part. It is uh, in Mosul or where is that? Deva Vita is, uh, you can take to from Mosul, it's about 25 kilometers towards Anekal. Or from Anekal, you can go. It's not there, but not there. It is the ex far, farthest end of the world. It is open. Okay. So after Bagan Beta, if you're going on Bagan Beta Road, you get Jirini Yana Kala. Okay. So it's in that place. So is it the Tali Road? It's on the Tali, it's off the Tali. Tali Road. Okay. <coughs> so these, these are all the actual launch tools of the year, and all the uh, whole thing. So if you wish, if you are from these areas, you can all go and check it out completely there. You may be my friend. That's I hope you do it. Beautiful exercise. And then last piece about, somebody said about 20 circle and benchmarks and all that. So Krishna, you said about this. 
Now these points, even to this day, are still marked out in survey of India maps. Even some of the commercial maps, you know, TDK, GDK, all that you buy, they still carry them because they are all copies of what we call survey of India maps. Now there is one more thing. In addition to these big triangles, in many of the important locations, they embedded stone marks. And this is a, this is to be used for local reference. And they had left this all over the town, in Bangalore, all over the country. So what I'm showing you are images of those survey of Indian maps. And these local ones, small ones, are actually called DMs, standing for benchmarks. And their real reason is to they give you the exact height from sea level. Benchmarks are basically that. So if you see, this is the airport region. You see a lot of airport thing because it's the way, you know, that's my daily commute to office and all. So special interest in make like that. You know, all this is there. Baptist hospital. And I have a five one So there's a BM there that says 912. And 912, by the way, is actually, BM is actually a carry forward from British times. So you just, you just put it in there, they recalibrated it and sent it us. It's not free. So if you go around, and this is a very easy exercise to do. And these were built all along highways and railways. So this is a document from those days, which shows from Jurabit to Mango railway line, what all BMs they have in stock along the railway. So you'll see a few in Mango or whatever. You see the baseline again. The baseline is also doubled as benchmarks because they're very accurate ones, right? endpoints of the baselines, right? So nice exercise. If you can't see what happens. So this is the list. Yeah? It says on top of a stone prism embedded on Camel River, Camel River is renamed as Cowboys, you know, Cowboys Road today. End of Great Road in Western Sea Project and in Bangor, Trinity Church. Andrews Church, St. Mark's Church, GPO, all these places they have. Fun exercise, if you go check on some of them, and I check, a few, I check out a few, this is Trinity Church, which is just around the corner. The description says, on the third stone stair, the third step leading in Trinity Church, Bangor, under the porch, on the west face of the building. Go there. One, two, three. I didn't find anything. They never said it. 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 I looked around. In this place, I saw this. If you can see this, faintly visible. There's a circle, there's a DM. Where did they go? Over the years. GPO or GPO? GPO, I don't know. It's been GPO, they demolished. Okay. If you remember, the old GPO was demolished and the new one was built. So, this is the close up. You'll see a circle in here. It exists to this day, except that the ground has been set. What was the third step? This is the very first step. Right, that's all. So, what is written on the BM and see, you can, see here, you can actually see faintly GDS BM. I have other photos. So, I went to St. Andrew's Church. St. Andrew's Church is a similar story. It's a third step and all that. St. Andrew's Church, no more steps, it's all the way. Grand, the ground is also, they fill it up. You see, you see the body from the story. Yeah, here you can see. That's all right. okay. <clears throat> so this is very nice. A lot of people go see Kekarad. They have two benchmarks on this on the stone here and on the other side. So if you see here, you can read this G P S circle. What's the big deal here? Here they said this is 3130.56 feet height from mean sea level. It's like you know, we have the along the road we have the swan distance, uh, the swan distance, swan distance, exactly the same. But in railway station, especially, you know, whether we have names, we are always right or you know, So here you can see that. On the corner of uh, Kabam Park, opposite KSK, the base of that statue has one. GPS, this is very easy. Here. But any 
indication as to what is that post and uh, oh is the oh, mark is the mark yes. at this point okay at this point oh but it doesn't say what is the height from the mean sea level that is on the table not here oh, yeah. because they published it will be on the maps and everything else now station here yeah, one station all the railway stations they have in Scotland. Kiyakuram station is supposed to be one, and Kiyakuram station is again a place I drive past every day. So I went there, I looked out, the description says in front of the station master's office. So I was looking around and I didn't see anything. I went in and asked the station master. But then I had some of these photos. So I showed him this and I said, have you seen this anywhere in your station? Who knows the station better than those guys, right? He said, just giving boomerangs. They were very busy people, you know, strings coming and going. There was phones starting to run out. He said, give me two minutes, I'll show you what I want. Then he took me to a place which is opposite the toilet. If you can see this, it is, it is that stone. And. Uh, but how come they didn't plaster uh, it? If you, can see, if you can see this, it says GPS. It's our square business. It's a circle, there's a square, it says DM. If you are from that side, you can go to the station, hang on to the toilet, you'll find this. And interestingly, this man said one thing, how come they didn't destroy it? Right? He said, sir, uh, it's, it's his 30th year in service there, same station. I knew one day somebody will come, sir, it must be important. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you are an idiot or you have some reason to do it. You would have slept peacefully. And this is another one. Along railway tracks, bridges, culverts. On top of the yeah, bridges always have that side, uh, this one, barricade kind of thing. On top of that. Okay. So I, at that point, I was trying to look at it. And uh, she, this is right behind your office. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't find anything there. In fact, you know, there is a bridge below. But on top, there's nothing there. It said on the parapet wall, blah, blah, blah. There's no parapet wall at all. But, and I was looking along the track on this side. It said right side, you know. And I was walking along and coming back. In the middle here, I saw this. In that same uh, location. Went in there, and I saw this GPS wheel. This is lying there. If you know where the Adalex is on White Street? Yes. Yeah. Prestige, uh, yes. I don't know what is the Prestige company. Chalzinigate, this one. Chantani right behind you is the railway track, and that's where it is. Now, the interesting part is, it used to be single track. Madras Bangalore used to be single track. They doubled the track. And they doubled the track, they doubled the uh, bridge as well, and it was extended, right? If this was assumed, if this was the track earlier, this would have been the perfect wall before this was built. In the exact same place, they put it back. There's no more parapet wall, but they knew there was a mark that some maybe something important, whatever. They put it back. So it's sitting on in main jelly. There's nothing below there. Nobody has a clue what it is. But for 100 years they have preserved it carefully. Okay, and that's it. So you can do this exercise yourself. Very simple. Those vacuum constructs are there. Hundreds of apps on Android, iPhone, whatever. Forget those coordinates, it will lead you to the place, go there, check it. You can do the triangulation as well, come from this place to this place, the gas formulas by there which will give the distance, everything moves. What's the big deal? So what's the big deal about this? Think about this. Go on top of Salam Durga. Here? Stand, see to Here, tell it, totally train it there. Highest point in the... Right, right, right. 